Good morning and welcome to worship this morning at First United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us. Um, and we can worship together even if we're not in one place, for we are of one heart and mind and life together as the body of Christ. So welcome today uh, to worship. We want to uh, uh, greet you in the name of Christ and in the name of the extended church. Uh, a few good announcements for you. We are doing our Bible study uh, every Tuesday at 1210, so you can find it on Facebook Live at that moment, or you can watch it on our website anytime through the week, and it's the Workbook on Living Prayer by Maxie Dunham. Um, and we would love for you to engage with us, order your book, go on site. Um, Sarah, what's going on with children and youth? There are still so many ways for your kids and youth to be involved in discipleship here at First United Methodist Church. I sent out this morning to our email listserv the virtual Sunday school lesson. It's also available on our Facebook page and on our church website. Youth ministry friends, make sure you're marking your calendars for Zoom youth group on Wednesday. We'll meet with the high schoolers for breakfast at 9.30 and the middle schoolers at at 4 o'clock p.m. So you get all that information from us. Make sure you get our remind texts and the information about how to get on that list is on our church website. And Sarah, I saw a picture of Worth Viegas reading the children's book that we mailed out this week. Yes, we mailed out books to all of our youth and to all of our children. The youth received a field guide for daily prayer. It's an awesome little book that we hope is a, a great resource. And the children received one called Promises, Projects, and Prayers, mm. which is also <laughs> a, a way for even the youngest of our kids to engage in a living prayer life Wonderful. with Christ. Wonderful. Waylon, again, lots of food being served to those in need. Yes, another amazing day yesterday. Sonia knocked it out of the park again along with the whole team. We did 762 meals yesterday. It was amazing. Uh, this week, we're teaming up with Amos Mosquitoes on Monday and Thursday and Friday. We're teaming up with Fat Fellas and Robbie Oaks, uh, and then we'll be back at it again Saturday. There's wow. still a lot of need, a lot of people that, that need the help. There really are folks coming to feed their communities yes, and taking sir. it there. I know um, Pastor Patrick took some food to the staffs at Crystal Bluffs, yep. Carteret Landing, and Brookdale. And Brookdale. So we're very happy. North River Fire Department came. Uh, Mill Creek, one of the Mill Creek churches mm -hmm. came and fed Mill Creek also. So it's been mm -hmm. amazing. It's a fantastic uh, opportunity to serve. And, and Jason, a great opportunity on Wednesday nights to yeah. worship God. Yes. Yes, join us again. We're going to, no telling who will be with us on Wednesday, <laughs> just whoever's available. We get together and worship together. So uh, can I come us. sing? I heard that Pastor Sarah wanted to come and yes. sing. Sarah and Wayland this week. Yes, yeah. yes. I'll yes. be there. I'll be there. It'll be a, it won't Seven be too many tuned in. Seven o'clock on Facebook. Noise. I hope you'll worship with us. Don't forget as well our confirmands. We will see you on Facebook, or excuse me, on Zoom. Uh, Tuesdays at 4 o'clock, and that's real important. Email us your responses to worship today, so we have that. Mm. We invite you now to uh, join, join us as we begin worship using uh, Psalm 98. Um, and uh, Pastor Sarah and I are going to read it responsively. You join in in alternating verses as well. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song and music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Let us worship our God. Join us in singing this morning. Great. 
Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So invite you now to join together with the church, and this time the church includes um, all the saints from the past and present everywhere and even into the future as we join together in that historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as that church, we are blessed when we are able to share one of God's great gifts to all, and that is the sacrament of baptism. And so this morning, we join together and celebrate the baptism on this special day of Bryn Louise Bittner. We are excited this morning as an act of worship here at First United Methodist Church to celebrate the baptism of one of God's precious gifts, uh, Bryn Louise Bittner. Uh, at the same time, we are receiving into uh, the covenant of our community of faith, both Robbie and Isla and Bear, and we're excited to have them. Bear is the big brother. Um, so we're excited to have them. Remember, brothers and sisters, when we baptize, we also, as a community of faith, are making some vows. We vow to be godparents of Bear and of Bryn Louise, helping to rear them alongside Robbie and Isla in the faith. Um, and so worship with us this day as we celebrate this baptism. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Robbie and Isla, we ask you these questions on behalf of the whole church. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. I do. Do you accept the, excuse me? You're fine. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. I do. And will you nurture your daughter in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? I do. As I said, as a congregation, we also participate. And so to the body of Christ in worship this day, the church, will you reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. We now bless the water. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and she who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. What name have you given your daughter? Bryn Louise. Bryn Louise, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may grow to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. It is a joy for us to welcome this, our new sister in Christ. 
through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend this family to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. It is our joy to present to you this child of God, Bryn Louise Bittner. Our first scripture uh, reading this morning comes from the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to John. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the other two disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, we come together for prayer, and I hope by now some of you have begun sending to Waylon uh, some prayer requests. Waylon, come up if you would, and uh, we want this day, of course, to send out a blessing upon all mothers as uh, we celebrate this special day. We want to pray for our Early Learning Center, which reopened this week, to pray for our staff and the children and the families um, as they're caring for one another. Um, hey, Bradley, I hear you have a prayer of thanksgiving. What would that be? Your birthday? And what did you get for your birthday? Yeah, I was going with the, a new house. Yes, and a new bed that you're getting to sleep in now, so we give thanks. We want to praise uh, God uh, for Vicki and Matt Zettel as they became grandparents to uh, uh, a new grandson. And Marlene Kelly. Uh, Marlene uh, has uh, had to go to the hospital, and we pray, Marlene, for you, uh, Tina, for you and all of your family. Waylon, what else is... Beth Henry sent in for Hazel, Anthony, and Caroline. That's right. Hazel had some surgery, so we pray for Hazel, Anthony, and Caroline. Uh, Debbie Gilligan. For Debbie prayers. Gilligan, we continue to pray. Ryan Baisden, his family. Yes, uh, Ryan Baisden's father uh, died this week, and we want to pray for him. Uh, Bruce Davis is having some back pain. Okay. So ask for some prayers. For Bruce. Uh, Alan Leary uh, has a friend, Mike, who is on the kidney transplant. Okay. list that he would like prayers for. Okay, and as we're remembering that uh, friend Mike, we also pray for uh, for Al Willis, who is awaiting his lung transplant. Uh, uh, Miss Davison and for Dr. Everett. Uh, Dr. Everett, he's receiving treatment for cancer. Okay, Dr. Everett. Ann Carpenter sent one in for uh, her dog, Ella, who's having some problems. Okay, and we pray for your service dog, Ella. And we also want to pray for two other families that lost loved ones this week, the family of uh, Gary Merrill and Sean uh, Cowley, and we pray for them. As we go into our time of prayer now, at the end we normally pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Today, rather than pray it aloud, it will be played uh, prayerfully for us by handbells um, and piano. Uh, we're thankful to Brenda and Susan for doing that. But wherever you are, you can listen in a prayerful spirit or say the words there at home. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you and we lift up all of these prayers, uh, thanksgiving for new life and for the gift of life. We thank you for your presence with those that are grieving and suffering. Uh, we pray for those in the hospital, both as patients and also all those who are caregivers. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to remember each name given this day and all those whom we name in our hearts. We especially pray for this world right now, Lord, that we would be compassionate to one another, uh, that we would live in hope and not in fear, and that we would serve you as we serve our neighbors, whether it's uh, those that are hungry or those struggling with work or family or business. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite now all the children, wherever you are, to, uh, to gather around uh, for worship. Uh, a special welcome this morning to uh, Bella and Bear and Victoria and Aiden and Bradley and Jackson as we come together for this special time together. So boys and girls, today is what special day? Mother's Day, right? And 
even if we aren't with our mothers now or uh, can't be with them, uh, we all have mothers, and there are things about our mothers for which we give thanks. I have a picture here, and this picture is of my dad and my mom. My, my dad's in heaven now. My mom, isn't she about the prettiest mom you've ever seen in your life? Happy Mama's Day, Mama. Um, there are things about my mama that I remember dearly. One of them that's very important to me is that even when I made mistakes, even when I did bad things and sometimes I didn't obey and hit my brother or didn't clean up the way I was supposed to, my mother would forgive me. Yes, sometimes she had to punish me and to teach me the right thing to do, but she always forgave me and she gave me another chance. I'm thankful for mothers that teach us about Jesus and about grace and give us forgiveness and give us second chances. Let's pray together a prayer of thanksgiving for all mothers. Gracious God, we thank you for our mothers, all mothers, uh, either by birth or by spirit. We thank you for all those who teach us and care for us like mothers in our world. We ask you to bless them and watch over and protect them, especially in these days. And teach us, dear God, to always seek from you that forgiveness and new chance. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We do continue to worship God by offerings, and though we can't pass an offering basket here, uh, many of you are still giving to the ministry of Christ in many, many ways. I hear of some of you helping out a neighbor who's in need or sending a special part of your resources to help one of the, the charities or to support our first responders. Uh, those are offerings to God. Some of you are giving energy and time, helping to serve food or to sew masks. Um, and others are sending your resources here, um, either online or by check, so that we can continue the work of Christ in and through this place. So let's continue to worship Almighty God by the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Out on the sea, cause I know who is. 
Friends, will you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, uh, you are here. You bring us together even when we are apart. Silence all the thoughts and voices in this place and in all of our hearts and minds that don't come from your spirit. Speak through me or speak in spite of me. Speak, Lord, because we are your children and we are listening. Amen. Friends, hear now the rest of the story that Pastor Powell was reading earlier, picking up at verse 11. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to them, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor would spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well, and every one of them were written down. I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think I love this story because it feels so familiar. I haven't been to the Holy Land yet, but I can picture myself there on the shore in the cool and the still of the morning. I can smell the fish cooking over a charcoal fire. I can hear the water lapping up on the sand. I can see the sunlight and the colors of the morning and the way the light dances across the still waters. I've spent so many mornings cooking over a campfire on summer sailing trips while we were working at Don Lee, and those are some of my most treasured memories. It must have felt comfortable and familiar to the disciples, too. See, before Jesus called the disciples to drop their nets and follow him, Peter and Thomas and Nathaniel and the sons of Zebedee We're all fishermen by trade. For three years, they left behind everything and everyone they knew. They saw miracles. 
They witnessed the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And then on Good Friday, all of their dreams and hopes and plans died along with Jesus. Peter denied him. The others ran away. The risen Jesus found them three days later, scared and terrified, locked behind closed doors. And then he breathed on them the breath of life and again disappeared from their sight. And the disciples were left with an impossible question. What next? What happens now? They tried to get back to normal. They went home. They went back to the shores of Galilee. They went home and back to the life that they once knew. They went out catching fish, perhaps forgetting that Jesus had called them instead to be fishers of men. They fished all night, and that was common practice on the Sea of Tiberias, or Galilee, as it says in some other Bible translations. And all good fishermen knew that if you didn't catch anything overnight, when dawn broke in the morning, it wasn't likely to get any better. And even today in Galilee, you'll see fishermen using this technique of having a spotter along the shoreline because sometimes someone on the shore can see where the fish would break across the lake better than someone in a boat. And so this morning, a man calls out to them from the shore. Friends, cast your net on the right side. And the disciples, they don't recognize Jesus. That word he used there, Friends in the NIV translation is sometimes translated children in other versions of translations of the Bible. In Greek, that word is paideia. It's a family word, and it describes the relationship between a parent and a child, a caregiver and a caretaker. It implies a mutual, genuine love and true relationship. Who did the disciples think this man was calling out to them and addressing them in such a familiar way? And then the splash of a net breaks the silence of the morning. And the disciples discover that the net is so full, they can't even bring it into the boat. And all at once, in the abundance of the catch, the disciples recognize the risen Lord. An impulsive Peter, you got to love him. He's the first to jump into the water. He puts his clothes on first because every good fisherman worked in very little clothing, but every good Jew knew that to perform a religious act, you needed to be properly dressed. So they get to shore and Jesus asks them to bring fish, but Interestingly, he didn't need their catch. He already has fish there cooking over the charcoal fire. He cooked them a familiar meal of fish and bread. I wonder, I wonder if when they put the first bite in their mouth, did they suddenly remember back to the loaves and fishes that Jesus cooked on the mountainside that afternoon when he fed 5,000 men, even more women and children. When he took the bread that he was cooking that morning and he broke it and he gave it to him, would they remember back to the night when they shared a Passover meal together? When he told them to carry on his work, when he told them that life wouldn't go back to normal, because instead God was making all things new. And what about Peter? What would he remember when he smelled the coals there on the beach? Would he remember back to the courtyard of the high priest where he denied Jesus only hours after proclaiming that he was willing to die? The next part of the story is sometimes called the reinstatement of Peter. See, three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? 
And three times Peter says, yes, Lord, of course I love you. Three times Jesus responds to Peter, if you love me, take care of my sheep. Three times. Jesus offers Peter three chances to choose Jesus, to say yes to the calling of shepherd instead of the vocation of fisherman. Why? Why three times? Because Peter had denied Jesus three times the night that Jesus was betrayed. Jesus gave Peter an opportunity for reconciliation, to make it right, to make a different choice when faced with the same question. Jesus doesn't scold Peter or cast Peter out. Jesus instead comes and makes all things new. Y'all, there's so much good news for us this morning in this story. A year and eight months ago, that's 20 months, it's a long time, we moved out of our house. Yesterday morning, we woke up there for the first time. We, wa- we as a family, we are walking into a new normal for all of us, every single one of us. Our state began reopening on Friday, even though we still walk through the valley of the shadow of the coronavirus. We're all walking forward together into a new normal. And I think sometimes we find ourselves like those disciples, searching for what is familiar and for what is comforting, trying to go back to normal, when instead Jesus stands on the shoreline and calls us into a new normal, saying, behold, I am making all things new. And just like those disciples recognized Jesus in the abundance of the fish, we still can recognize Jesus in the abundance of our own lives. This miracle story at the end of the Gospel of John perfectly bookends the Gospel, if you think back to the way John's story began. See, he began with the story of the wedding in Canaan. It's the abundance of the wine that night when the disciples recognize him then. And now in this story, again, it is abundant where the disciples recognize him. You know, I think for me, I recognize him in the abundance of grace that has carried us through these last 20 months. And I recognize him too in the ways he's still working here, in this room, in this corner on 900 Arundel Street, in the ways that we are still able to give to others because of the ways so many people have given to us in abundance. Of course, John puts a specific number on the abundance of fish, 153. It's a really oddly specific detail. And so many of the church fathers have pondered its meaning, and they've come up with a variety of different theories. But the one that I like the best comes from St. Jerome. He proposes that 153 is the number of fish species in the Sea of Galilee. So perhaps what they caught was one of each kind of fish. So the net then could represent us, the church, big enough to hold everyone, all kinds, without breaking big enough to draw in all people everywhere. The church is able to love and to love abundantly. We can love all, even the lost and the broken and the last, even the people like Peter who made big mistakes. See, Jesus gave Peter an opportunity to right his wrong. So, too, Jesus gives us a million second chances 
my oldest son, Bradley, who is being very good and quiet during this service. He is the master of negotiations. He makes often in our house, in our family, I will say, Bradley, if you do this, then this negative thing will happen. And inevitably, Bradley does this. But Bradley doesn't want this consequence to happen. So Bradley will say to me, Mommy, I'm sorry, just give me one more chance. And that's exactly what Jesus did for Peter and exactly what Jesus does for us when we run to him and ask for forgiveness. He meets us. He feeds us. He forgives us. And then he sets us on a mission. When we make big mistakes, when we deny him with our words and our actions, he still loves us. He still wants us. He still calls us and he still uses us. All we have to do is seek forgiveness and then to live out repentance. And Jesus shows Peter exactly what it means to love him. To love Jesus means we are called to take care of his sheep. See, love isn't defined in this story by an emotion, but by an action. To love Jesus is to follow him. At the Last Supper, Peter claimed he would lay down his life for Jesus. And then he denied him that night. But after this encounter on the beach with Jesus, Peter would start down a path that would ultimately lead him to lay down his life for his faith. His mistake on the night that Jesus died did not define his future. Just like for us, our mistakes, our wounds, our brokenness, that doesn't have to define who we are. We can give those things to Jesus, and he says the same thing to us that he says to Peter. Lay it all down and follow me. And bless Peter, even in the beauty of this shared moment with the risen Lord, in this beautiful moment of reconciliation and renewed purpose, jealousy creeps in. He sees the disciple that Jesus loved with him and says, but what about him? Jesus tells Peter his glory will be his death. He tells Peter that this beautiful statement of calling, and, and here Peter goes, but what about him? Peter's response. Y'all, isn't it so typical of us? We're always trying to compare ourselves to someone else. We're trying to see if our faith measures up. You know, even some of our early church fathers debated over whether or not you had to truly lay down your life for your faith to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Maybe we still wonder whether we're important in the kingdom of God in a world where few of us will ever face that choice. I think it's beautiful to note that Jesus gave all all of the disciples fish that morning. He calls all of us his disciples. He calls us to follow him, and we can't compare our path to someone else's. Just like Paul says, from one spirit, all get many gifts. Just like each member of the body is important to the function of the whole. Each person in the kingdom of God is important of equal value and of equal worth to the God who made us and loves us and sustains us. We're called to follow, to lay down what was and walk forward into the new normal. And hear this good news. What's coming in the future is better than what we left behind in the past. Change is hard, change is scary. It was for those first disciples. Jesus told them to carry on his work when he left them at the Last Supper. But they didn't go out and immediately start building churches. They went back to Galilee and started fishing. 
they needed to encounter the risen Jesus once again and remember who they are and remember who they are called to be before they could start the task of fishing for men and shepherding the flock. Y'all, we have to keep meeting Jesus on the beach. We have to keep allowing him to nourish us and feed us if we're going to keep doing the tasks that he calls us to do. And the best news is this. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He walks forward with us into the new normal, knowing that as we're walking with him, when we follow him and when we trust him, this path we're walking on with him leads us to an amazing destination, our true home in heaven. And we get tastes of it now, even through the trials and temptations of this life. The promise of faith is this, that the new normal will be better than the old normal. Now, better doesn't mean easier, but the best news is that because of Jesus, we ultimately know that our lives have a happy ending of true and everlasting life together with him and his kingdom forever. God is making all things new, friends. So let's sing a song, a new song, a song of praise instead of a song of lament. A song of victory, even if victory hasn't happened yet. Because it's through these stories of resurrection that we can trust and know that victory is coming. Taste and see that the Lord is good this week. Keep walking with Jesus in the footsteps of resurrection. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, you are making all things new. It's so hard for us as humans to face change, to face trial, but you don't ever leave us and you don't ever forsake us. God, we're sorry for the times like Peter that we deny you with our thoughts and with our words and with our actions. We're sorry. Accept our forgiveness. Teach us to live out repentance. Teach us to be your hands and your feet in this place so that we might be good fishers of men and effective shepherds of your flock. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we praise him for that reckless love. For I spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took the breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night. I could learn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. No, be overwhelming, never ending, backless love of God. Yeah.
When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I fell no blood, you paid it. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, fight till I'm found in me the night. I could. Mountain, you won't find up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no kind of God that fights till we're found and chases us down and leaves the 99. It's a reckless love. Let's go out and share that reckless love with everyone who needs it. May the love of God the Father, the grace of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen. Oh, dear.